A very good morning to one and all present here. I'm Dr. Hardik Mulya from uh, Computer Engineering Department, Government uh, Engineering College, Rajkot. I welcome you all for our webinar, Getting Started with NLP for Enterprise Applications. I welcome our invited speaker, Mr. Akshay Toshniwal from Mindtree, Mumbai. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and being with us today. On this event, I welcome our respected principal, sir, Professor Dr. C. H. Vitlani, sir, and respected head of the computer engineering department, Professor Dr. Chirages Thakar, sir. Now it is my privilege to introduce our respected principal, sir, Professor Dr. C. H. Vitlani, sir, who has been associated with our institute as one of the pioneers since the beginning. He is from electronics and communication engineering with 27 years of experience in academic field. His vision and leadership have strengthened our institute to achieve plethora of milestones. It is our privilege to introduce our respected head of the computer engineering department, Professor Dr. Chirages Thakar, sir, who has been associated with our department since 2018. He has total 21 years of experience in academic field. His vision and leadership have inspired faculties of our department to work towards our vision mission and has been a guide and patron of all the activities and initiatives undertaken by us. He is also actively guiding us as a head of the special initiatives at our institute under which our supercomputer facility is included. I request sir, for his word. Please. Uh, namaskar. Namaskar, uh, sir. I hope I'm audible. Uh, yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Akshay, sir, good morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. A very good morning. Thank you. Thank you for being part of the supercomputing facility at our department. Uh, uh, it is formal welcome, but I'll start informally. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Akshay, sir, for uh, being part of our supercomputing facility. Sir, what we are actually following is the uh, research institute and uh, academic institute's tradition of creating uh, a special logo for supercomputing facility. Okay. And our ever dynamic uh, Dr. Hardik Molia is kind enough to design the supercomputing facility logo. And under the banner of the supercomputing facility logo, we have, uh, uh, I think, covered seven. Sir, Hardik, sir, this is the eighth event we are conducting. Uh, yes, sir. This one is the uh, ninth one in this. This academy. is the ninth one. So, uh, sir, this is the ninth event uh, which we are uh, conducting under supercomputing facility. And we personally believe that our graduate students or graduating students should imbibe the technical qualities, not only sure. for uh, from academia, but from industries also. And you are one of the finest example so far as uh, choosing the uh, talent pool is concerned, because you have, uh, uh, you have really done your MTech as well as your MS, and you are technical lead with Mindtree Mumbai. And Mindtree sure. uh, people who are associated with... Uh, corporate world and techno world, Mindtree is a well-known name, not only in the state of Maharashtra or the southern part of uh, India, but the entire country. And we have been uh, following Mindtree for various uh, uh, corporate level and technology level, uh, technology level initiatives. So uh, thank you one more time for being part of this. And uh, sure. sir, we have one agenda and the agenda is very clear. Can we prepare uh, engineering graduates uh, for uh, industries? Because nowadays the skill set requirement at industry level is changing and it is True. evolving very rapidly. And this is, this is a very big challenge for us because we are a premier government engineering college in Gujarat and we are front runner so far as the 12 plus graduating students uh, uh, choices are concerned. After Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar and Baroda, mm -hmm. Rajkot is a natural choice to them. And basically what we look forward is uh, we get very meritorious students. In fact, in the Saurashtra region of Gujarat, uh, majority of the students who are uh, scholars or who have very good grades and marks, they actually enter our, uh, they take admission in our uh, computer engineering program. And when right. this is the scenario, sir, when this is the scenario, our accountability and responsibility actually increases manyfold. Absolutely. And to cater, yes. So to cater uh, this, 
uh, what we have done is we are doing lot many initiatives like we have uh, actually four students club in our department one is institute of engineer student chapter another one is google developer students club which is run by and supported by google and this is the fourth year uh, a, where we have the technical lead in fact our technical lead student harshil kaneria is right now he is also pursuing his semester 6 uh, at iit gandhinagar so this is okay. a gujarat level scheme and this is not only to uh, sir or the audience this is to mm-hmm. everybody that it's a proud moment for government engineering college rajkot that our student our computer engineering student has secured admission uh, through uh, this technical competence level interview and he is per- currently pursuing his six semester uh, this uh, in uh, in iit gandhinagar सिद्धि जी साहब आपने हैंड रेस किया है कैन यू कैन यू डू वांट टू इंटरप्ट मी समवेयर सिद्धि जी सर सर आई थिंक राइट नाउ ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर नॉट अलाउड टू अनम्यूट देम सर सो सर कैन वी टेक हिज कॉल नो नो लेटर ऑन ओके ओके फाइन ओके थैंक यू सो प्लीज सो हर्षिल इज डूइंग हिज बेस्ट इवन we have sir another club is code chef which is competitive programming club and okay. i was okay. recently uh, uh, collaborating uh, uh, having conversation with our faculty coordinator and he said he has already launched 60 programs in every week he is actually okay. giving one program so apart from the uh, corporate and industrial applications and various programs we are also uh, making sure that every week one uh, program is uploaded and the students okay. try to find out the indigenous solution to that program Uh, we yes so we run uh, this uh, another club uh, also and uh, currently we have just to the august audience because i am the nba coordinator of the whole institute also we are very proud to announce that uh, civil engineering department and mechanical engineering department of gc rajkot has received the nba accreditation for 3 years we have just received the news this week only and uh, we are yeah. definitely in the uh, celebration mood and uh, i hope that in near future computer department ec department and ic department will also go for this outcome based education uh, nb accreditation initiative and right now every department faculty is contributing in the growth and development of the department not only that all right. faculties have very uh, very uh, full heartedly adopted outcome based education and this super computing facility and uh, all this is part of our uh, movement to uh, transform the uh, the budding engineers into responsible engineers and that's why the title of today's session is nlp for enterprise uh, this so sir making students for enterprises uh, making them ready for industries is our challenge and i really thank hardik molia sir who has always come up with very uh, very catchy uh, and very uh, deep titles and find out found out some of the finest uh, resource persons so on behalf of uh, gc rajkot and on behalf of computer engineering department uh, i really uh, thank uh, hardik molia sir on this public platform that he has really kept us motivated and if uh, he is giving me credit i think i would be the le- least uh, deserving person so far in the department to take any kind of credit because basically what i do is i just uh, wish them good uh, things and i just uh, carry my duty and our principal sir is uh, kind enough who has given us the mission statement of transforming this uh, government engineering college into iit concord uh, concord sir is a nearby village so our students initial batch students used to call that sir can we transform this engineering okay. college into iit concord so like you have iit mumbai which is known as iit pavai also because pavai lake correct. pavai yeah. area is very much it's so in that like, area correct mm-hmm. yes yes so we are a state engineering college and we are quite happy with that but this is like a mission statement that can we have activities at par with uh, national uh, importance level institutes so uh, i am taking every time i take more time in in in, in uh, i i get emotional and take more time but thank you everyone for joining uh, the supercomputing facility thank you uh, tosniwal sir for obliging us uh, to uh, to take a session and i hope any event of mind free if we can uh, organize a, a couple of days workshops also in future uh, that is sure. on our card that is also our request also and i hope that this uh, session would add a lot of wisdom 
to our all attendees and i hope the attendees will keep on giving us great support in days and months to come with this note thank you very much uh, sir thank you all uh, one and all and i hope ye jo masal humne shuru ki hai hum chalu rakhenge gyan ki masal jyot ki masal jo technology ke is daur mein bahut zaruri hai jab duniya badal rahi hai jab ai ml ki baatein even aapko kabhi kabhi to mall mein sunai deti hai kabhi kabhi restaurant mein aap machine learning ki awaazein sunte ho that means the world is as uh, awakened right. to the new yes. uh, era of machine learning and deep learning and in that case when we are sitting on the other side of the table i always tell my students that you are sitting on the other side of the table other side. you are not going to be the the user community you are going to be the de- developer community the developing community. community correct yes. true so we true. are on the other side of the table we have more responsibility and accountability and before i leave this sir we have indigenously developed our uh, department our institute website our six semester students have developed the uh, the uh, website when they were in six semester they started developing the website on on 25th of this month actually we are launching the website which is indigenously developed by computer department students and professor shyam kotecha deserves a special mention here that he has taken a pain so we sir we believe and we practice atmanirbhar bharat because i always believe that make in india jitna important hai utna hi mm-hmm. make for india bhi important hai so we always Absolutely. believe in atmanirbhar bharat we believe in make in india we believe in make for india and this super computing facility in a in a small uh, computer engineering department uh, of western uh, government engineering college will put a very giant impact on the uh, in the academy of technical education in months and years to come so uh, uh, professor molia and your team you really deserve every bit of the success and you are j- uh, creating future generation and getting them exposed to the finest of the uh, technical brains in industry so thank you very much and uh, with these words i one more time uh, uh, keep the forum open and i give the reins to molia sir thank you very much uh, thank you so much sir for your motivation appreciation and uh, support uh, on behalf of the faculties of our department we all are thankful to you and uh, because of your vision because of your leadership uh, we are able to uh, work and uh, specifically in supercomputer facility your continuous support motivation and guidance uh, let us progress I want to share uh, with the participants that uh, Gujarat Coast Gandhi Nagar has set up supercomputer facility Sirak India's Param Shavak Deep Learning Unit at our institute in 2017. We are uh, providing completely free access of this unit for the research projects of faculties and students of our institute as well as those from the other institutes. At present, we are supporting 10 research projects mainly in the field of deep learning. along with the research projects we keep organizing online technical events and uh, in this particular academic year today's webinar is our ninth event our faculties also participate in different workshops organized by cdec guj coast as well as those which are organized by nvidia deep learning institute and others under national supercomputer mission at different iits and nits I have a request to all the participants if you want access of our facility then I will share the brochure I will share my contact details along with your e certificates and for the e certificates all of you need to fill the feedback form that we are going to share at the end of this webinar Now it is our proud moment to have Mr Akshay Toshniwal sir with us who is working as a technical lead at Mindtree Mumbai He works closely under data and intelligence to build analytical and intelligent solutions He has completed BE Computer Engineering from University of Mumbai, MTech Artificial Intelligence from University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, Uttarakhand, and MS Multimedia and Data Management from Polytech Nantes, France. Data Science and Artificial Intelligence is one of the tech areas that he is extremely passionate about. He is an associate editor at the AI Time Journal, conducting interviews and podcasts with some of the top minds in the data and AI industry. He has been in the data science and AI domain for four plus years, working in areas like machine learning, computer vision, natural language processing, and many more. Sir, one more time, on behalf of our institute, 
we are thankful to you for accepting our invitation and being with us today. Without taking much time, I request you to please enlighten us with your session. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Hardik sir. Thank you so much, Chirak sir. And thank you to the entire Government College of Engineering, Rajkot. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to be a part of this initiative. Uh, I'm sure uh, whatever Chirak sir said, uh, we will surely achieve that. And uh, your words were quite motivating, sir. So thank you so much for that. And um, to set the context as Hardik sir and uh, you all must be aware, we'll be talking about, uh, you know, how do we get started with NLP for, for enterprise uh, level, you know. So how NLP is actually rising, what is the growth prospect in that and uh, what impact it is creating on enterprises. So how startups and businesses are making use of NLP in order to make sure that they reach a broader set of people okay to target a large set of audience they are implementing nlp strategies okay now there are many use cases there are many business verticals where nlp can be used so we'll be you know just summarizing few real time use cases as well that you me we all use in our day to day life and uh, we'll be understanding what is the market growth prospect how nlp has advanced okay so previously we were only having some sort of very basic translator services that we used to use but today we have a lot of further things like you know smart assistive chatbots and things like that so how it has grown and lastly we'll be understanding what the future of nlp is all about so with that i shall share my screen and we shall also understand one use case where you know we are trying to generate a content for a blog uh, by using NLP. So that is uh, natural language generation where we are, act it is also called as NLG, where we are using the natural language processing capabilities and by understanding the context, okay, uh, we'll try to generate a particular block content for some sort of uh, characters. Okay, so we'll be looking into that working demo as well. Okay, so <clears throat> please let me know once my screen is visible so that you know i can move forward accordingly i hope my screen is visible everyone uh yes sir your screen is okay. visible great so um, i shall start off okay so this is going to be the agenda of our entire uh, talk okay so we'll be first understanding a brief overview on what natural language processing is all about how it is beneficial? Why is it needed in the first place? Everyone is talking about NLP. Everyone is talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, but why it is actually needed? That is an important area to be, you know, under, to be understand because, uh, see, not every problem can be solved by using AI. Okay. Or not every uh, problem requires artificial intelligence. So it is very important to understand that why we are solving a particular business problem by using natural language processing or by using artificial intelligence. So whenever uh, you, you know, work in the AI, ML, uh, deep learning, computer vision, or any domain, which is related to data and artificial intelligence, you first need to understand what is the business problem. Okay. You first need to understand what is the problem that you are trying to solve. And only based on that, you should understand that, okay, for this particular problem, XYZ technologies will be useful and accordingly you can start building some sort of solutions for it. Then we'll be, uh, you know, uh, talking about few examples that we, you, me, and we use in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, what is the enterprise level impact? Okay. How startups and businesses are actually changing the way that we interact with few systems. Uh, what is the market growth? Uh, I'll be talking very like in depth about it, but just to summarize two areas have a great future, uh, 10 years, 15 years down the line, those areas are natural language processing and computer vision. Okay. So we'll be talking about that future of NLP. How do we envision NLP in the later stage? And lastly, we'll conclude our session with, uh, some, uh, interesting questions from your side. Um, also, if you all have any questions with in between the slides that I show in between the content that I show, so maybe you can just note it down, uh, and maybe we can discuss it once the session ends so that we don't, uh, you know, uh, get that break in between. 
okay and i'll try i'll try to take some pauses in between so that if you all have any concerns we can talk about it and we can move forward okay so um i won't be you know introducing myself because hardik sir i guess i guess he's uh, he was too kind uh, to introduce uh, uh, me to you all and he gave a very uh, you know very interesting and very kind uh, introduction about me so i'll just skip that and moving forward will be starting off with the overview of nlp okay now this is one area that falls under artificial intelligence that is the number one thing that you should do uh, ai is the bigger umbrella and inside that you've got machine learning you have computer vision natural language processing you have robotics you have brain computer interface you've got uh, deep learning so all these are areas that fall under artificial intelligence now this is an area that deals with text and speech okay so what you say uh, uh, you know what you listen and what you type what you talk it all deals you know boils down to natural language processing now it comes into play when you are trying to deal with multiple languages okay or you want to process the language that you are dealing with say for example you have an english document with you so what you need to do uh, you can build a solution out of it that you scan the document by using an ocr based solution so by implementing ocr you can scan what is present in the document and based on the content that is there in the document you can actually uh, take some sort of actions okay so maybe i'll be giving you all one good idea that you all can work on and uh, you you all can build a project around it okay so that's where nlp comes into picture when you're dealing with multiple languages or maybe you know uh, text processing and things like that two types uh, majorly one is uh, natural language understanding and the second one is natural language generation okay so when we say natural language understanding it helps us understand the semantics and context of the language okay now uh, when we talk about natural language processing it is not about uh, you know just uh, understanding the meaning or vocabulary of a certain word okay but it actually understands the context of that language so what are you trying to say now when we talk about english as a language english is a very funny language right uh, one statement what you whatever you say uh, based on how you use the statement it has different context okay the same statement has different context so nlp has that capability to not just understand your vocabulary and meanings of the word but or, but it also understands the context that what are you trying to interpret what are you trying to mean by mentioning that statement so that is what natural language understanding is all, all about it identifies the language and it processes it accordingly so maybe you are talking in hindi okay Uh, or maybe you are talking in english or maybe you are talking in marathi gujarati any language so it has that capability to quickly understand that okay you are talking in hindi right now and accordingly it gives you the result so one good example for this can be your uh, your android phones or maybe apple phones for uh, iphone users uh, siri and google assistant okay you talk in english they will give you a result in english language if once you start talking in hindi you know slowly their results will keep on changing and then you'll be getting results in the language that you are trying to speak okay so that's how that natural language understanding is all about then we have natural language generation okay so natural language generation is nothing but it generates textual data for you and it generates speech data for you and it is generated by understanding obviously certain patterns and behaviors we will be seeing the demo of this in a python code in a jupyter notebook so i have prepared a code base uh, which i'll be demo which i'll be giving the demo uh, to all of you where we are using a gradio package for text generation it automatically has some sort of pre trained models uh, by using those models um, we just need to specify the first line or maybe the first phrase say for example uh, government uh, college of uh, engineering in rajkot is located at okay say for example we mention this phrase and after that it will automatically generate the content for us 
okay it will automatically create a, a blog which will be of certain characters okay and we can specify those number of characters so we'll be looking into that demo once we you know cover entire slides and everything so that's generation of textual data when we talk about speech data again your smart assistive uh, you know um, bots are in uh, play where you talk about something and they respond back in the form of a speech okay so that's again somewhere where uh, natural language generation is being used where you try to generate some sort of speech data and whatever the language whatever data that is getting generated okay it gets generated by understanding the patterns and behaviors okay now uh, uh, let's let's take an example of our current scenario okay this meeting this webinar is being held on microsoft teams correct so as soon as uh, hardik sir has started the recording of this entire session there is an option of recording the transcripts as well correct so how those transcripts are generated in microsoft teams those transcripts are generated based on my speech based on whatever i am speaking based on whatever hardik sir or chirag sir is speaking so whoever is speaking within this particular meeting or within this webinar microsoft teams based on their nlp capabilities they'll grab that from our speech and it will automatically put it in a textual format and that's how it generates the transcripts in all these video conferencing tools in our case it is microsoft teams so maybe you know once this recording and the session ends you will be getting two options one to download the recording and one to download the transcripts so the transcripts are basically automated you know it's generated in an automated manner based on whatever you speak during the session so that's again something called as natural language generation okay it understands your patterns and based on that it will give some sort of results which you can maybe use it for later purpose now uh, we saw what nlp is all about and uh, what are the two types like one is understanding and one the other one is generation okay now how is it beneficial okay obviously if we are trying to use some technology we will have to understand the benefits of it because if there are no benefits then what is the use of using it correct so what are the benefits the major benefit is that you can you have the you know capability to build a multilingual system number 1 okay so you can include regional local international languages within it okay and it has the power to detect the source language and understand its context okay again i'm telling you see understanding a meaning of a word is not difficult that can be done that can be done by a very basic program in python but when you want to understand the context of what that phrase or what that statement is then that is a challenging task that is a little bit complex task where you have to have some sort of natural language processing capabilities because based on the context okay based on the context the system understands it will generate or it will perform certain actions okay so say for example uh, if the context of the statement is that uh, <clears throat> this city is great okay so the context is that okay it's a it's a positive context okay and uh, accordingly the actions would be performed so one uh, one good example would be uh, an application in nlp which is called a sentiment analysis okay now the sentiment analysis is used by many enterprises okay now why they use sentiment analysis uh, is they want to understand the feedback okay they want to understand the feedback of their customers and that is the reason they make use of sentiment analysis i'll be talking about that when we you know jump to the enterprise uh, impact uh, slide so as i said nlp systems uh, they help you reach a broader set of audience uh because you can you know you have the capability to deal with multiple languages like local regional and international and the primary motive of nlp system is to make sure that the end users interactions are uh handled very seamlessly so the end user interaction capabilities are improved by using nlp and obviously from end users perspective they have the advantage of communicating with the system in their own language and it doesn't matter if you know a specific language or not 
so previously all the systems were developed in english language correct so it was very difficult for some local or regional people uh, in our country to make use of the applications they were you know deprived of those resources they were not able to access those resources because of that language barrier but nlp has overcome that barrier and it is making sure that if you are you know building some sort of nlp capabilities you can uh, you know have that uh, advantage of targeting users everywhere because language is not a barrier at all now and engagement increases because more and more people find it easy to interact many people find uh, you know english language easy in mobile devices but if you see for some remote uh, areas people they will have the language as hindi or marathi in their mobile phone itself so they uh, they have that ease while you know in uh, understanding that particular local language so uh, if you have that nlp capabilities within your system the interaction increases and it becomes more better now <clears throat> why is it needed in the first place okay why do we need it it is needed so that we can diversify the types of users interacting with the system number one okay say for example today you build an application okay today you are building a website okay or maybe a mobile app or anything any software okay but you only have one language in that okay which is english and uh, it is trying to cater to uh, you know the masses to all over like to all the people in the country and on a global level so that kind of a software you have developed but the only problem is that your language your software has only one language now if we if if i want to make a software which is on a global level i need to make sure that if my software would be accessible in the european market or not because you are in the european market every country has their own specific language france has french spain has spanish okay so that way if your software has only english as a language it would be difficult for the european people to use it correct so in order to diversify that market in order to make sure that there is a diversi diversification of multiple and you know varied types of users interacting with the system we need natural language processing as i said language becomes a uh, it it doesn't become a barrier so there is no obstacle as language okay anymore it is needed to understand any language okay and it helps automate the understanding of languages okay that's what it is all about now <clears throat> uh we'll be talking about some real time use cases now now these are Uh, roughly around five use cases surrounding NLP, but let me tell you all, NLP is not restricted to only these five use cases. Okay, the number one is chatbots. I'm sure many of you might be having, uh, obviously, all of you might be having bank accounts uh, with multiple banks. So if you next time go on the website of HDFC Bank or you go on the website of State Bank of India, uh, they have some chatbots. uh integrated with their website where you can get you know where you can talk to that board you can get to know the services of the bank if you have certain queries with regards to your account you can communicate with it so chatbot basically means that it's an automated bot or an automated system interacting with you there is no uh, other person sitting uh, somewhere else who's actually trying to talk to you it's it's not like that okay so it is dependent on the turing test Uh, that is what the concept of chatbots is all about so you sit over here and you type some query and you get a response from the bot okay the user feels like okay i am getting a response from another person but it is not that way now these chatbots whatever we see on these websites primarily are built in english language but now many startups many businesses are focusing on building chatbots in a way which supports multiple languages which is multilingual so that you talk something in english it gives you a response in english if you talk it if you give some question in hindi it will give you the response in hindi so that's how it works and these chatbots make your work very easy very very easy you won't believe today many uh, applications uh, uh, i'm sure uh, 
many of you might have like due, due to this covid pandemic many of you might have installed the arogya setu app okay so as soon as you start the arogya setu app it will ask for you the basic details your name date of birth age were you having any sort of symptoms or not and if you noticed it is completely on a chat right it's a chat interface so you you it's not that you need to fill a form or something but whatever details you give you get a response back whatever details you fill in you get a response back so that's how that chatbot works and that is how the integration happens in multiple websites and mobile applications that is one beautiful use case because many companies today want a chatbot okay let me tell you the difference between a third party chat api and a chatbot a chat api is just a third party api integration that allows a user to chat with your support team okay that is different chatbot is something which has internal machine learning capabilities meaning say for example today i am saying to the bot hi how are you okay and tomorrow i am saying hello how about you okay now the meaning of both the sentences are same the meaning is that i am saying a hello to the bot and i am saying how he is doing or how she is doing the motive the context remains the same okay but my language changes so chatbot has that capability to understand that okay what a user is asking and here where nlp comes into play nlp understands the context how are you how about you uh, what about you uh, how are you doing okay all these things at the end of the day mean just one thing which is aap kaise ho or how are you so when you integrate nlp in that that bot has the capability to understand that okay all these four to five questions mean the same thing which has the same response which is i am fine thank you how are you that's how it works but when you have a chat api it is dependent on a support team within your team okay so it is uh, basically some other person actually assisting your query so for chat apis you have multiple options on available on the web but for chat bots it's not like that for chatbots you can customize it you can build it right from the scratch if you want and based on a specific use case say for example uh, consider your college like uh, you're in a, a government college of engineering rajkot and you want to build a bot for the college okay you can build it you can build a bot for uh, people who want to understand what are the courses available what is the fee structure how old is the college what is the placement uh, you know placement team everything so this becomes interactive and that is the reason many businesses are focusing on trying to build a chatbot the second is smart assistive bots okay these are your smart assistant systems like uh, like i mentioned before which is google assistant apple siri and uh, you also got amazon alexa okay these are the three major contenders in this uh, smart assistants uh, area so even you can build a smart assistant uh, area by making use of either amazon alexa's benchmark or by either making use of google's uh, uh, google assistant's benchmark okay that's how it works so what these bots do these bots have multiple capabilities right now chatbot has the capability to only interact with textual language for now okay or maybe uh, a voice voice input but smart smart assistant bots have a capability much larger than that they can set an alarm for you they can uh, call someone on your behalf they can talk okay they can scan images uh, they can provide you with some recommendations a lot many things so that's why chatbots and smart assistant systems are divided into two different applications so when someone tells you that i need smart capabilities in my website so you need to ask them that what you want to be as smart you want a chatbot or you want your website on a smart assistant platform to be opening up these are two different things okay so uh, smart assistant bots are the ones which uh, you know give you the response like google assistant amazon alexa you can talk to them in an, any language okay language is again no barrier and no matter say try this okay after this session completes open your google assistant 
and try speaking hello how are you in three different languages okay or maybe you try to say hello how are you in different ways like hey how are you hey how are you doing uh, hello and you know that way so on and so forth and you will notice that no matter what you say the the response remains the same with slightly different language uh, from the google assistant bot okay because what it has is it has the capability of understanding what kind of question you have asked okay it is knowing the meaning of that question and that is the reason it will give you a same sort of response by with just minor tweaks okay to make sure that that chat looks more natural and more candid okay so that's how things work and now smart assistants are going to an altogether different level uh, google is doing that where you can actually book appointments okay uh, just by using your smart assistant you do not require a physical person to actually schedule an appointment and fix up a timing everything your google assistant bot will do for you so that's where nlp is actually progressing the third real time use case i'm not sure if uh, you all have come across this but this is happening a lot in the on the from the enterprise level document scanning and mapping so there are a bunch of documents that uh, that are present uh, in terms of businesses in terms of uh, if you consider the uh, you know legal and compliance area which which is law so when you talk about the law industry uh, there are a lot of documents right now it becomes a pain to actually scan the document individually in a manual way okay it's a it's a very tedious task so what uh, businesses are trying to solve here they're trying to make sure that the document scanning happens automatically okay and if the document consists of certain specific keywords it will be mapped accordingly to that particular section okay so for example a document consists of some xyz words it will be mapped to memorandum of understanding so it is an mou that's how you can you know map that document if the document has some other abc content it can be mapped to a non disclosure agreement which is an nda okay now currently this is a manual process people are actually reading it and then classifying the documents whether it's a memorandum of understanding whether it's an nda whether it's a confidential agreement something like that but with the help of nlp ocr and ai technologies what is happening is that you can understand and you can process the text within that document okay and you can classify that okay if these are the text that are mentioned in my document and if these texts are occurring at so and so frequency it can be mapped to my uh um you know a, a particular document type so that's how it can be mapped then we have automated text generation this is one of the biggest uh, use case that today everyone is trying to build i'm sure uh, many of you must have heard about open ai and the github code pilot so github code pilot actually helps you uh, write uh, programs in an automated manner okay it will help you write programs you do not have to write it you just need to tell them the context that what you want to perform and automatically the github code pilot will actually write the entire program for you so that's how it works and recently i think uh, deep mind or uh, google uh, i don't remember the agency name but uh, one of the top businesses have developed a nlp use case where uh, it is actually uh, you know taking part in a competitive programming and it is actually doing that so that's how and that's where nlp and artificial intelligence has advanced so it has been advanced to an altogether next level so automated text generation i'll be showing a demo for that it's a very brief and a very basic demo maybe i'll share that code snippet with y'all as well y'all can try it out uh, along with this presentation so and y'all can try to build some use case out of it so it's going to be uh, interesting and uh, then we have a translator so translator is uh, i'm sure uh, everyone knows about google translate microsoft translate there are many translator services so these translator services also makes use of nlp internally okay so whatever language if you if you see uh, google translate it has an option to detect the language okay so when i say detect a language it automatically detects what language you are typing 
previously like few years ago google was not having that option but later google even google has developed an nlp engine within the google translator service and now they have the option to detect the language automatically so say for example you are copying a french or you are copying a hindi text and you are just pasting it in google translate okay so what happens is you don't have to select the source language the source language will automatically be detected by google you just need to select that uh, you know uh, target language that what uh, uh, like in which language you want the translation to be uh, done so only that you need to select the language uh, detection happens automatically and that's where nlp comes into picture now <clears throat> talking about the enterprise level impact now why enterprises are in a race uh, to implement nlp systems one of the major major reason let me tell you this is to acquire clients okay every business the main motive is to acquire clients because only if they acquire clients they have that profitability impact in their business so in order to target their systems more uh, on a regional level or on a global level and uh, to a larger set of audience startups and businesses are making sure that their systems are nlp enabled specifically for regional level content the next is uh, it has a huge amount of data access okay so when you deal with text text is a, a huge amount of data okay everything is in text today everything okay now tomorrow if i submit this presentation to you all okay to for your reference even this presentation has textual content in it so what you all can do you all can run some program on this presentation and understand that okay what are the keywords mentioned in this presentation what are the words that are mostly occurring in this presentation so you can build a system on top of that so nlp when whenever enterprise level uh, corporate startups and businesses are building nlp system their primary focus is to acquire a huge amount of data so that accordingly they can build a model over it and accordingly they can serve some uh, systems serve some sort of solutions to the end users and uh, you know it leads to address the user in the right manner and it provides a personal touch okay now what do you mean by provides a personal touch the meaning of this is that today if you're talking in hindi okay say for example i talk in hindi right now okay and uh, i get a response back in hindi from the system i will like that okay comparatively if i talk to a system if i try to talk to a system in hindi and i get a response in english that becomes difficult to digest because i am a hindi speaking person if i am talking to someone in my language i want the system to respond in that language if that happens then that builds that credibility that builds the trust and that uh, you know that provides a personal touch okay so again that uh, increases the impact on a end users perspective okay and <clears throat> what are enterprises focusing on are they are focusing on ocr okay they are focusing on document scanning and mapping as i said so these both can be combined as well so many enterprises are actually trying to uh, overcome the uh, very uh, you know <clears throat> layman jobs very naive jobs businesses are trying to just remove the resources from there because they are trying to build an automated intelligent capabilities to it say for example now there are a lot of uh, documents coming in the business uh, for a particular event or for a particular uh, task okay now what is happening in the current scenario in many businesses is that there are multiple resource people sitting there in the offices and they are trying to scan the document page by page okay and then they are trying to classify it or trying to take some sort of actions after that but this many businesses are trying to overcome they don't want the resources to be sitting in the office and do this manual work they are trying to automate this and how they are trying to automate it that you submit the document on a portal you submit the document on a system the system will automatically classify internally that okay these are the text in it uh, through ocr it will search it will scan the entire document word by word phrase by phrase and it will accordingly map it to a particular category okay 
so your resources are saved your time is saved your money is saved and you are giving a better service to the end user that's how it works then we have smart assistants and chatbots now uh, given one example of uh, this uh, nlp uh, in many uh, i would give an example focus to loan applications okay for many loan applications uh, many app, mobile apps or many websites they tell you to upload a bank statement okay and they they have that headline that get an approval in 2 minutes uh, get disbursement in 5 minutes so on and so forth all those catchy uh, taglines okay how are they doing it have you ever thought about it if anyone would have thought about it you would have got a very deeper level understanding of nlp in 2 minutes they are telling you all that you send us the pan card aadhar card you give us the bank statement and we'll tell you that okay you will be eligible for so and so loan amount and you will get the money in your account in the next 5 minutes so how are they processing all the documents this quick okay obviously there has to be an automation behind it if a person is sitting behind in the office and trying to you know scan each document turn by turn it's never going to happen in the 5 minute timeline okay so there is automation behind that so what happens is your you upload the pan card you upload the aadhar card okay using ocr your pan card and aadhar card are verified okay that okay it's a genuine pan card it's a genuine aadhar card after you upload the bank statement what it does it automatically analyzes that what is your uh, balance how's your uh, debit credit cycle what is the closing balance and things like that all those banking terminologies they try to analyze it and within a minute they tell you that okay you are eligible for a 50000 or a 1 lakh loan amount get it in your bank this is how that system works and obviously they they fetch those credit scores and things like that but that is secondary the primary thing is that you upload your documents and it quickly verifies that okay it verifies under a minute or under 2 minutes of time so obviously there is no physical resource person sitting there and actually analyzing it it happens using automation so that's what your doc- document scanning and mapping is all about then we have smart assistants and chatbots many enterprises want to have this uh, major banks okay few of the top banks are already having this chatbot system where they have a where uh, they have an id team who's actually trying to build these these bots uh, i have named hdfc state bank of india uh, i'm sure i guess uh, i'm i'm not very sure but i can i i think so bank of baroda also has a chatbot now in place but uh, hdfc and state bank of india, india they do have it uh, if you go to the twitter handle of make in india uh, which is a government india government of india initiative even they have a chatbot they have a chatbot which is integrated with their twitter account so whenever you create a chatbot it can be integrated to multiple systems it is not that it can only be integrated with a website or a mobile app you can integrate it with your social media as well and there is one more focus area where enterprises are paying a lot of attention and they are heavily investing is sentiment analysis uh, now uh, you know that uh, say consider an example of stock market okay now in stock market any stock any price of the company is dependent on multiple factors okay obviously the major factors are what is the uh what are the new uh, innovations products services of that company uh, what is the balance sheet and all the uh, numbers like the fundamental an- analysis and all those things the other factors where the price actually fluctuates are external factors meaning what are people talking about what are the news surrounding that particular organization uh what kind of uh, articles that particular company has so how this is tracked is say for example you want to track uh, the performance of a particular company in the stock market so if you only track the price that won't help you much because the price of the stock varies on the news coming up say for example there is a negative news coming up in the market all of a sudden the price of that company will go down because there is a negative news in the market so the sentiment of the market becomes negative but as soon as the news becomes positive the market sentiment turns into a positive side and the price of the company goes up so this is nothing but sentiment analysis 
so what major companies and like many enterprises are trying to do they're trying to consider these external factors they're trying to run sentiment analysis on news articles things like that where they're trying to understand that what is the sentiment of the, that particular news article like what are people thinking about it what how the market is responding to it whether it's a positive impact it's a negative impact or it's a neutral impact so these are the three classes in sentiment analysis it can be positive negative or neutral which doesn't lie anywhere so that's where enterprises are actually investing okay so these are the few areas where enterprises are focusing with respect to natural language processing uh coming to the market growth as i said <clears throat> uh before i started off uh, you know talking about a lot in this presentation i mentioned in the initial uh, slides that two areas in artificial intelligence is are going to change the way we interact with systems let me tell you this one is natural language processing and the other one is computer vision today it's 2021 2026 or maybe by 2031 5 years to 10 years down the line the systems that we are interacting with today is going to change completely with the help of natural language processing and computer vision so if you or any of your colleagues are planning to you know build a future in the ai area go for it go for it without any second doubt it has a lot of scope specifically these two areas okay uh it is evolving day by day the reason behind this market growth is that we are constantly consuming and generating data right so today we are on this chat right now like we are conducting a session what what is happening here okay in terms of data what is happening i am creating the data because i'm talking i'm giving a presentation you all are listening to my presentation and you all are reading my presentation so you all are consuming that data so i am generating data you all are consuming data so everywhere there is data in our you know in our life so this data uh if you you know include nlp to it you can get some amazing insights out of it okay and few of the advancement in nlp are basically you know it's done by top organizations like google microsoft facebook amazon okay when we talk about google google is you know uh trying to uh, create that kind of mechanism where all your day to day activities uh can be managed and done by just google assistant that's it you do you won't need any other thing in your life you just talk to google assistant and everything would be done so that's what google is planning to do you have microsoft facebook amazon so uh a lot of these agencies and companies are working on uh nlp microsoft uh, this github code pilot what you see over here uh <clears throat> this got launched uh, uh, after microsoft acquired github so the work uh, that was done was done by a lot of microsoft researchers and uh, ai scientists there where they developed this uh, open ai and code pilot so open ai is uh, you know making your artificial intelligence uh, understand your uh, things in a much more better and efficient way we have gpt2 and gpt3 where uh, it helps a lot in terms of natural language understanding as well as natural language generation so that's how it works and in terms of code pilot i said uh, it's it's a wait list for now okay so you can go to your github account if you have a github account you can go to github.com you can uh, search for code pilot and you can register for their wait list so it's a wait list right now they have uh, given the access to only a very close set of users in order to try it's in the beta phase right now but as soon as it will be released for you know all the uh, public it will be a great advancement in the terms of nlp so how this code pilot works is i'll just give you all a brief uh, there are many code repositories uploaded on github okay uh, so github is basically a repository and a version control tool where you can have multiple versions of your programming uh, project or your your code base whatever you have created and uh, so what uh, github and microsoft they do, uh, they did they analyzed all the code repositories they analyzed everything on the on github and they created a natural language generating uh, system 
the by using NLP and NLU, they understood like what the code base is and different things. And they developed this code pilot system, which helps you uh, write programs in an automated way. So now you do not have to write the programs uh, right from the scratch. Code pilot uh, will understand your requirement and will give you the code base right in front of you. You can just edit or update wherever you want according to your uh, business problem. So that's how this code pilot works. Lastly, uh, <clears throat> the future of NLP is, uh, trust me, it's extremely evident. Uh, it's growing and uh, you know, it's not about just uh, that uh, it's growing online, uh, it's growing offline as well. Like data is growing everywhere. Okay. And <clears throat> when we talk about textual data, it is uh, uh, rising a lot because uh, of the social media usage. We all are on social media and we generate immense amount, like millions and billions of data is generated every day on uh, different, different social media platforms. So if someone is to analyze all this textual data, they can generate some great insights out of it. Okay. And uh, content creation is increasing. Okay. So what content creation, like uh, con content marketing, community building, these are again, uh, some next big futures, uh, five years, 10 years down the, down the line. So uh, by using NLP or content creation process becomes easier. And uh, as we make use of text and speech in almost every situation, right? So uh, I'm sure many of our work, uh, many of us, okay, uh, we make use of Google Assistant many times, okay? We, we make use of, the, of those voice uh, enabled uh, in order to talk to the mobile device and just make sure that, you know, our work is done, maybe to find a route to a place, or to set an alarm or to call someone or, you know, something like that. And uh, <clears throat> when all of this data gets feeder into a system, it generates immense amount of uh, insights, which can be actually turned into, you know, which we can take some actionable insights uh, out of it. Okay. And uh, it has a great future. Okay. And uh, the main reasons are that, uh, uh, we have data in multiple languages. Okay. So it's not that everyone is interacting in English and the systems only have that language capabilities, but, uh, different people are interacting in different languages. So we have data for those languages and, uh, there is a need of automated text generation because content creation is growing like anything. And we need something where our resources, time, cost, everything is saved. We have voice enabled systems, which helps uh, uh, include these NLP capabilities. And obviously last but not the least, we have intelligent assistants and chatbots, which makes seamless communication and interaction with the end user. Uh, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, if you want to build a career in artificial intelligence, and if you are looking for a specialized niche market that, okay, AI is a, say for example, you think that, okay, no, AI is a, a very big domain. I don't know how will I make a career in that. So if you are looking for a niche, go ahead with either natural language processing or computer vision, try to understand the core concepts behind it. Okay. There are many practical applications. Okay. Text recommendation systems, summarization, voice assistant systems, many more. And what knowledge do you require? Obviously, there's a lot of math involved, okay? Because uh, computers and systems, they do not understand text, okay? So all these texts, whatever we write, uh, whatever we uh, send to our systems, to our uh, mobile devices, they get converted into some numbers. So are they, so they are encoded, okay? So there's some sort of vector uh, mapping that is happening. Uh, it is called a word embedding, okay? uh, encoding happens where your text is converted into numeric values. And then there's a lot of mathematics and statistics involved, uh, which helps you generate some sort of models. So I would say if you are planning to build a career in NLP, uh, you can focus on mathematics and statistics. And, uh, I won't say that, uh, 
you need to be a genius in that or you need to be a very you know high level expert in that no nothing like that uh, but uh, it is important to be sure that you are aware of the basics okay so when we talk about statistics uh, statistics it is important that you should know about uh, central limit theorem the hypothesis testing uh, chi square test and the basic concepts when i talk about mathematics it is important that you should know about linear algebra you should know about a little bit basics of calculus and things like that so that's what the basic knowledge you require you can jump in into any programming language whatever you are comfortable with python or r python is highly recommended in the ai industry is because of its huge community support okay the community that python has no other language has in the entire world and that is the reason why people are dependent and they like they love python so much because it has a huge community support it has ample amount of libraries and packages that we can make use of and lastly uh, if uh, you know you're trying to build nlp system if you have knowledge of different languages it is great nothing better than that but it is not mandatory obviously no one uh, has multi, like uh, a lot of language skills so that's absolutely optional but uh, the point here is that uh, if you are planning to build an nlp system like a chatbot or something uh, the first two points are enough for you because you know you can try your hands on uh, to build a chatbot uh, keeping in mind the english language and accordingly you know have some sort of sentences and uh, uh, requests and response Uh, so that you your bot is ready first with that core language and then maybe you know you can try to include different languages to that so that's how you know you can proceed ahead uh, in terms of learning and uh, building nlp systems so uh, that's that's all for, with regards to the presentation uh, any questions or concerns in that uh, if you all have i'll take up the questions now and maybe then we can go ahead with the demo that i am planning to show where you know we can generate some sort of content by using a python library called gradio so any qu questions i would be happy to take it forward and i'll try to answer them uh, in the best of my capabilities uh okay uh, akshay sir i have a request uh, if it is uh, convenient for you uh, can mm -hmm. we keep a question answer at the end and uh, if you uh, show your demonstration so oh, sure 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 Sure. if it is convenient to you then uh, we complete demo and then uh, at last we keep uh, sure uh, no problem no problem no problem at all no problem at okay. all. thank you sir so uh, sure 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 uh, i hope my uh, screen is visible which is a jupiter notebook uh, yes sir it is visible yeah so uh, anyone who has a low end laptop or doesn't have a you know high amount of ram or something uh, please do not worry you all can make use of uh, google collab okay it is a very interesting uh, 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 portal where you can actually run uh, jupiter notebooks okay uh, okay maybe i'll share the resources with everyone later but uh, okay so i'll share this uh, link with you all where uh, just by using a gmail account you all can get access to this jupiter notebook it accesses your uh, system ram okay if you want more uh, you all can uh, always upgrade it but uh, it makes use of the ram and the disk on a cloud level okay so uh, i'll be showing you a demo in terms of uh, text generation so there are two packages that i'm using over here uh, one is gradio and one is ai text gen which is ai text generation so <clears throat> what i'm doing i'm firstly installing these okay so i believe i already have this so it will just give me uh maybe requirement satisfied so here you can see that uh the requirement is already been satisfied so we'll just wait for a moment so that this gets completed and then we'll talk about how uh, we are getting the output okay so these are all the dependent packages okay so ai text gen makes use of transformers it makes use of pytorch and things like that and different different packages okay you need not have to have a very in depth knowledge of uh, how these packages are being used but obviously you need to be sure that okay uh, if this you're using uh, what is the impact and how it is actually you know changing So 
We'll just wait. Okay, so this has been executed. What I'll do, I'll just quickly import this. And uh, here, what I'm doing, I'm trying to import a pre-trained model. This Eleuther AI GPT Neo 125M. So this is like, uh, it has some 125 million uh, uh, words, characters. Uh, so this is nothing but a pre-trained model. Okay. And if I have a GPU, so GPU is nothing but a graphic processing unit. Uh, uh, let me tell you all, uh, for running deep learning models, for running natural language processing, computer vision, they are computationally very, uh, you know, very high. So it requires a very uh, powerful infrastructure if you want to build a, a deep learning model because it takes around six hours, uh, 12 hours to train one model. Okay. So that is what the scenario is. So what I'm doing, I will just load this uh, pre-trained model uh, and what it will happen is it will download these models. Okay. So it will download the model into this particular variable AI and then maybe I can use this AI with some objects and I can generate uh, some sort of text and here there are some parameters like uh, the length of the text and uh, the repetition should be less. Okay. And these things. <clears throat> so there are a lot of optional parameters. You need not specify all the parameters. It's me. If you can see, it makes use of the hugging face transformers. So this is the model. Okay. And it has the vocabulary, the tokenizers and things like that. And here we are having this function AI text. And what I'm doing, uh, I'm defining the function here and I'm calling the function here AI text. And I'm passing this string. This is a phrase, okay? So I'm saying Mumbai is the finance capital of India and, and I am expecting the uh, AI text gen to actually generate the text for me. So as soon as I run this, it will generate a text and it will, you know, have a thousand length uh, uh, text in front of me. So that's how the processing happens. So this is executing. It takes time because uh, it depends on, uh, you know, what kind of GPU or what kind of CPU you have. And it depends on all those characteristics. So here you can see that we have Mumbai is the finance capital of India and it is the capital for countries middle class. It is a vibrant city and is one of the most vibrant cities in India. There are a wide variety of attractions and cultural activities for the city, so on and so forth. And your like you can see uh, the entire text has been generated. Okay. So uh, this is generated now right in front of you completely in an automated manner by using this generate one where we are mentioning the maximum length. Okay. And say, for example, if I change the text and uh, I say Gujarat is famous for food and okay, maybe uh, I'm just having uh, this state once. It's, and it's famous for food and, and I want that the AI system should generate a text based on the phrase that I have. So as soon as I run this, it will now uh, create a text, keeping in mind uh, these all parameters and patterns. Okay. So we'll be having a completely different output this time. Uh, let's see what the output is. Uh, and after this, we'll be uh, making use of uh, the Gradio package where uh, we will be having that interface. So it says uh, one of the states in India famous for food and Econia and in India for its food and food products. Uh, and it says if you're a food lover, you do not want to miss out on a tasty and affordable product. So uh, this, so here you can say village Dhamma and all these uh, things have been uh, added. Uh, so basically uh, it identifies these uh, patterns like if it is food, so here, if you see, it is talking completely about food and stuff. Okay. Maybe I should just say Gujarat is one of the states in India. That's all. And maybe you'll get uh, some uh, context uh, based on that particular uh, side and accordingly the 
text would be generated now whatever text that is generated obviously it is not all the time 100% accurate uh, there are a lot of modifications required as well but the point here is that it helps you generate uh, this great uh, article right in front of you and what you can do you can just simply uh, copy this and edit this correct because such a huge text if you plan to write it it will take some good amount of time but you can simply get it and you can you know just upload it and you can tweak it wherever you want okay so that's how these text are generated and your <clears throat> what we are trying to build we are we are planning to have a interface where whatever text we type in it will give us the responded output so i'll just show you that so it will you know it will create a user interface in front of us okay so this is a fast api so what it will do it will have a text box over here uh, it will just come up so here we have a text box okay so whatever text i write in accordingly my data would be generated over here okay so i'll say i am saying pune is located in maharashtra and that's all so i'll just click on submit so what will happen it will take it will run the backend and it will try to generate a code right over here and it will show us the time that okay in so time that it has uh, been generated so here you can see that it ran in 17 seconds and in 17 seconds please let me tell you all in just 17 seconds you have this huge content in right in front of you right so this huge content in 17 seconds is pretty good when we talk about ai and uh, it is uh, giving a good uh, like the language is pretty good uh, it first talks about pune uh, its abundance for local fruits and vegetables uh, 10000 varieties of peaches then it talks about uh, different uh, things all together okay so that's how uh, these ai systems are built it requires a lot of customization and you know accordingly it allows you to build your own set of models and things like that so that's what the demo is all about i would like to conclude my session here with respect to the demo and the presentation and all and i would like to take some questions now if anyone is having those uh sure sir sir uh, let sure. me uh make participants able to share their questions through the chat box sure sure sir please participants so uh, i will share my uh, feedback form link at the end of the question answer session so please wait for a while mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> uh participants uh, you can post your questions in the chat box okay sir will ai be the sort after career uh tamina yes sir. artificial intelligence as i said it's going to be one of the most prominent careers uh but uh, just knowing machine learning models deep learning models won't help uh, the primary uh, you know uh, area that one should work on is domain specific knowledge say for example uh, to answer your question tamina uh, you can build a career in ai which uh, can go to an altogether different level if you have some sort of business understanding so say for example you love about uh, uh, an area called as retail you like e-commerce space a lot so if you have that e-commerce knowledge and when you combine that e-commerce knowledge with artificial intelligence it will give you immense amount of uh, results and that is where your artificial intelligence capabilities will come into picture to you know automate that e-commerce operations
uh, participants, please wait for a minute. Uh, I think uh, Akshay sir is disconnected, so he will come soon. Meanwhile, participants, please don't uh, questions regarding feedback form and all. Uh, we will definitely share the feedback form, but at the time of question answer session, we should uh, ask a technical okay. question answer and then later on we can uh, discuss about. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry sir. I guess there was a network issue. I guess the it got blocked or something. I, I don't know. Uh, I hope I'm clearly no, no. audible now. Yes, sir. You are perfectly audible, sir. Okay, so uh, Tahmina, I guess uh, I answered your question. Uh, AI, definitely you can go ahead with that particular career option along with some uh, business understanding and domain knowledge. That would help you a lot in the long term. Okay, I guess, uh, okay. So next question I see is uh, uh, by Shiva Priya. Is there any NLP application for patient record processing? Uh, there might be because many medical organizations, many hospitals are trying to build uh, their hospital management system with these intelligent capabilities where uh, as soon as you record certain details, uh, it can be easily uh, accessible in the future. But you can definitely check on it. It's a very interesting use case uh, that you can work on. So based on some patient attributes like uh, whatever diseases are recorded, automatically the medicines can be recommended. So that's an interesting use case that you can work on. Uh, can you please provide the, I, I hope uh, Shiva Priya I have answered your question. Uh, Jamuna is asking, can you please provide the research topic suggestions from AI? So uh, Jamuna to you know answer it in just one line, artificial intelligence itself is a research oriented topic. So artificial intelligence is not an area where you develop something and you deliver something, but it is more on the research oriented side. So you obviously, you know, constantly uh, keep on developing new things. You keep on evolving new things with your new ideas and innovations. But if you're trying, if you're planning to research some core topics, maybe you can research on brain computer interface. Okay. That is one. The second you can research on is deep learning and natural language processing. It has a great future in multiple industry verticals. So NLP is not something where it is only used for uh, corporates or uh, businesses. It can be used in e-commerce. It can be used in finance sector. It can be used in manufacturing sector, so on and so forth. So accordingly, you select the industry niche first, like for what industry you want to, you know, build a solution and then you can select your research topic. So that's how what approach you can follow. Okay. Uh, okay. So Radhika Goel is asking uh, the text that was getting generated here. Is that created by the model or is it like Python's Wikipedia library? So uh, Radhika, it's uh, it is actually generated by the model. So if uh, let me share my screen again quickly so that I can uh, show it to you all how and where it is happening. So if you see over here, uh, I just hope my screen is visible. So what is happening over here? This is a pre-trained model, uh, Eleuther AI GPT Neo 125M. So this is like it is having a text or word corpus of 125 million. And from this model, it is actually building all this text. Okay. So what we are doing, we are uh, uh, accessing this pre-trained model. We are downloading it. We are storing it in this variable called as AI, where all these vocab tokenizers and all these configuration files are getting added. And we are running a function called as generate one, which is AI dot generate one. And that is where your text is getting generated. So your text is not uh, coming from Wikipedia. It is generated by the model. So I hope I have answered your question, Radhika. Okay. Uh, what are the hardware requirements for chatbot development? So uh, Falguni uh, Patel. Okay. Uh, interesting question, Falguni. So uh, currently, you know, infrastructure has developed in such a way that you do not require your own laptop uh, to have that uh, uh, sort of very high hardware capabilities. Like you need to have a GPU uh, or a dedicated graphics uh, card or something. You can make use of Google Colab and you can make use of some, uh, you know, cloud based Jupyter notebooks uh, where you can run uh, and build those chatbots. 
but uh, if you are planning to run it in your local system a good system would be having 16 gb of ram okay minimum 16 gb of ram uh, a good amount of hardware space and uh, if there is a graphic card uh, it is optional but if it is there the processing happens too fast so you can have a 1 gb or 2 gb graphic card uh, in terms of your local system okay uh will ai replace human intelligence in the future uh vikrant this is a very debatable topic uh, uh i'm glad you asked this question so ai re replacing human intelligence is very difficult and it would become unethical okay it would not be ethical in terms of the global development when we talk about so uh, i don't think uh, researchers or businesses would reach uh, at that stage but uh, it will be at par with human intelligence that's what i can say so ai and human will may might be on a equal stage in the coming future uh if it goes beyond that it would be dangerous for all of us so we need to be ensure we need to ensure that whatever ai solutions we create uh it is ethical it is uh, you know uh, scalable and uh, you know build on proper uh, moral values which is not impacting anyone so how text semantic analysis is uh, related to uh, nlp so text semantic analysis uh, dvg uh, it is related to nlp because we are trying to actually understand the meaning of the text so how we are understanding the meaning of the text we are understanding the meaning by using different uh, packages okay where it has those kind of vocabulary stored it has those context stored so there is one uh, very uh, famous library in nlp for beginners if you want to start which is nltk okay it is called as natural language toolkit so you can install that python package it has a word corpus and it helps you understand the semantics meaning it helps you understand what is the context of this particular statement so that's why we relate it with nlp okay uh Uh, may i know the exact link to find the path of take time to execute and can you suggest the links sir uh i shall share all the resources that i showed over here in the session so i, I will be sharing the presentation i shall share the uh, the the code that i showed you all so i shall share everything with you all maybe if you need any more things from me uh, please let hardik sir know about it so i shall sh uh, share it uh, share it with him and he can share it forward with you all okay so rr csc karthik is asking what is the scope of nlp in the regional languages okay so nlp in regional languages it has a very higher scope uh, karthik because uh, if you are planning to have some sort of regional languages uh, just you know having that translator service won't help you correct because by using the translator service you can convert the entire system in a regional language that would work fine but what about understanding the meaning what about understanding the user's query and what about responding to those user's query when all these things are considered like requesting in uh, local language or uh, you know talking in local language listening in local languages so that's where nlp comes into picture so it has a very high you know huge scope when it comes to regional languages uh suraj is asking do ai needs high expertise in mathematics or just basics so suraj as i said you do not have to be a mathematics genius or a very high level expert but yes you should know the basics see the idea behind knowing the basics of mathematics is python has made your life very easier and simpler right so you can just include a package and you can get your code built but the problem is if you want to understand what is happening behind the code what is happening behind the scenes and if you want to customize that then you need to know the mathematics and statistics concept so a basic level is fine to start off with but as soon as you progress and you advance you should know the concepts where you can relate with your programming and obviously with the solution that you are building okay uh, sampath is asking how effective this text generation model will work in case of low resource languages like hindi telugu and bengali so sampad it completely depends on what kind of uh, pre trained models are we using so what you saw over here and what i show you know what i showed was a pre trained model i didn't use any 
uh, existing training. Okay. So how this actually process happens is that you have a data set, then you build a model on top of it. So by using multiple pre-trained models, you train the model that, okay, if Hindi comes in, if Telugu comes in, if Bengali comes in, this is how the responses should be. Okay. So accordingly you get the outcome. So this can be completely customized based on what kind of model, what kind of uh, business use case you are trying to solve. So um, I'm sure uh, maybe you won't be getting that high level of accuracy, but you can get a decent and a reasonable amount of accuracy if you build your own model on top of these retrained models. So may maybe you can make use of transformers or a hugging face in order to build models around regional languages like Hindi, Telugu and Bengali. So that's what with your answer uh, question, Sampath. <clears throat> uh, Shiva Kumaran uh, explained dependency parsing in NLP. So uh, that's a, you know, it's more on the technical side, uh, Shiva Kumaran. Maybe if you need a specific answer from my side, what I'll do, I'll share the uh, use case. I'll share the information with uh, Hardik sir. And accordingly, uh, you'll get that info uh, when he shares all the details with you. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, answering that because it's more on the technical side. That's why it might take some time. Okay. Maybe I will have to summarize a few questions or, uh, okay. Um, sir, can we take a few more questions or uh, do we need to wrap it up? Oh, uh, sir, uh, we can definitely take a few more questions. So uh, if you are comfortable or, uh, because, uh, I mean, it's up to you, uh, participants, if you have more technical questions, then please post. So you can combine, sir, two, three questions and, uh, we can go ahead. Okay, sure. So, okay. One second. I'll just go on the top ones. Uh, I think uh, the last two questions are like, uh, how can NLP be implemented in stock market? Okay. And uh, second one is, uh, can uh, NLP used in blockchain technology for uh, storing and accessing patients' medical records? See, definitely. See, NLP and AI is such an area which you can combine with multiple domains. Okay. So you can combine it with a domain of IOT, which is internet of things. You can combine it with a domain of uh, uh, a blockchain, which is in terms of uh, security, because you're trying to secure that sort of data. You're, sec you're trying to secure all the records. So definitely you can uh, make use of NLP uh, with a blockchain. Okay. Uh, in blockchain won't be happening because blockchain has its own set of constraints rules. Uh, that is more on the cyber security and uh, you know, network side where you're trying to secure a particular, uh, uh, area. So you can implement NLP capabilities to that in, in how do that particular network get secured? So that is possible. And, uh, how can NLP be implemented in stock market? So, uh, I'm not sure because, uh, it's an ID. The username is not coming up. So NLP, uh, see, there are two ways. One is that you need to apply a predictive model on uh, the stock market to get some idea that what the price prediction could be. And you can actually uh, apply sentiment analysis on the stock market news. So as soon as you apply uh, sentiment analysis on stock market news, you will get an understanding of, uh, that. Okay. Uh, if the news is, if the news are positive for today, that means that tomorrow the stock market would be opening on a positive side, which will be, uh, which will sh be showing a uptrend. So it will be, you know, in a positive side, but if the news are negative, so if there's a negative sentiment in the market, there are majority of the chances is that there will be a negative or a downtrend in the market tomorrow that way. So that's how you can implement NLP. So, uh, the primary use case of NLP in stock market is sentiment analysis. Okay. And uh, uh, I I am not very sure, uh, Shiva Kumaran, if NLP uh, can be uh, applied in network security. Uh, it would be possible if you have that data of uh, network packets and things like that. 
but uh, you know it is very important to understand that what would be the relevance and what kind of uh, data you're trying to infer out of it like what are the kind of outcomes you're trying to generate okay so those are the things that first needs to be analyzed and understood and accordingly we can uh, you know get on a result uh best nlp tools so uh, you know for every user there are some different nlp tools which are uh, named as uh, best but you can make use of transformers hugging face uh, uh, there is a bert model by google you can make use of that but if you are a beginner shiva kumaran or maybe if any one of you is a beginner i would recommend uh, to start off with nltk which is natural language toolkit it's a package in python so you can start off with that and then maybe you can you know implement some other uh, things <clears throat> okay Uh, i'm re i'm sorry to anyone if i'm missing out the questions on uh... sir we can do one thing uh, they can uh, just uh, submit their questions uh, to me and uh, then i will i mean we can uh, communicate with them in that way because uh, i think the chat itself is very large so uh, yeah true true and i think uh, you have covered almost all the and uh, so i don't think uh, you have missed any of them sure sure so uh so sir uh, i think uh, as per uh, the request uh, participants uh, please uh, share your presentation and uh, sure um, hardik sir just one thing uh, i think harsh uh, has asked this question which i would like to answer sure uh, sir uh, yeah. so uh he has asked if my future is in ai can i build my future in ai if uh, i don't belong to a cs background so definitely uh, harsh and definitely everyone so anyone who is attending the se session who is not from a computer science or an information technology background they can definitely build a future in ai uh, in fact it will be a good thing as i said uh, just having the knowledge of ai won't uh, uh am i audible sir yes uh, yes now you yes, are audible now you are yeah i'm sorry again there was some issue and it got disconnected yeah uh no problem sir uh so uh, i was just answering harsh's question that uh, yes you can build a career and anyone who is not from the cs or it background they can build a career in ai because they will have a spare, you know advantage of having a different domain knowledge so that will definitely be very helpful when you uh you know start building some ai solutions so i think that's all from my side uh, hardik sir and chirag sir i think i would like to wrap it up over here maybe you can take it over now uh, okay uh thank you so much sir for uh, an informative session from nlp basis to the case studies to the future trends and uh, you have demonstrated one uh, uh, ai generated blog content uh, work so this session yeah. was uh, really interesting and uh, would definitely have been for the participants as well because uh, we can see that uh, there are a lot of comments uh, appreciating your session and asking for the presentation and your uh, sure. slides and all so thank you so much sir for uh, for accepting our invitation and for being with us today definitely um, sir it was a com absolute pleasure and completely my honor to be associated with the government uh, college of engineering rajkot thank you so much for inviting me sir thank you sir uh, i would like to request uh, professor dr chirag thakar sir to please uh, share your views on this session 
sir thank you sir uh, it is really uh, challenging for us to uh, uh, satisfy all the uh, students who come to our campus but uh, now we have expanded our horizons and hardik sir actually invites people uh, from all walks of life and all corners of the country this has been a very uh, powerful session i say i must say it has really uh, touched upon every aspects of nlp and uh, really made great justice not only to the title but to all the ignited minds who raised the questions because i i could see very active uh, 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 role from uh, the speaker side as well as very active participation from the audience and it is really uh, very rare in uh, nowadays when we go for webinar or online sessions but uh, this is really an exceptional uh, experience for each one of us uh, at this point of time uh, this is a vote of thanks also so i personally thank our honorable principal mm -hmm. sir for uh, giving us all kinds of encouragement uh, i thank uh, uh, tosniwal sir for accepting our invitation oh, sure. uh, being available delivering such a great uh, uh, session i hope thank you. Uh, thank you. we can uh, we can have more uh, workshops or sessions in future sure uh, sure sir very selected group of students or all participants get benefited i take this opportunity to thank hardik sir and his entire team uh, which handles the supercomputing facility all the faculty members of computer department for their uh, very active role in uh, setting up all activities and uh, last not but the least uh, i thank uh, all the uh, participants who have really encouraged our efforts so thank you very much and sir it's been great uh, to have you with us and i Same hope here, in near future we will definitely meet in person also absolutely sir we are start yes thank you from monday we are starting uh, the offline classes currently okay. we were doing the blended uh, learning like online offline mix mm -hmm. uh, as per the covid guidelines and protocols but from monday we are starting offline classes and i hope in this offline initiatives in future wherever uh, you visit uh, this part of gujarat please uh, make it a point to visit our place please oblige us with your sure sir in the super deputy facility thank you very much sure thank you thank you so much sir for your appreciation and for your kind words definitely if i'll be uh, somewhere around rajkot i will definitely visit the college and i would love to meet you and definitely meet hardik sir as well thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you chirak sir uh participants uh, i am uh, available for a while the feedback link is already posted in the chat box so all of you please uh, fill the feedback form and then take exit from this meeting so that i can get idea about how many of you are remaining okay uh, hardik sir okay, thank, uh, thank you so, you so much sir. maybe uh, yeah sure. sir. yeah as you get time sir please uh, share your presentation mm -hmm. so i will uh, share it with the uh, participants and uh, One Absolutely, more time, sir. A great uh, session from your side. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much, and thanks to all the participants. It was really nice interacting with all of you. Thank you. Thank you.